Thank you for taking the time to watch this video showing how you can design a typical project using our exciting new feature in Struct called 10.0, which is Load Tracker. In this example, you will see the many ways that Struct Hub can quickly calculate structural members in a project. I will offer tricks that I have learned over my use of Load Tracker on many different projects to help you save even more design time. This project consists of a two story building with an unbalanced roof design consisting of rafters supported by two ridge beams. There's a column supporting these two ridge beams, which is supported by a floor structure below. We will begin by designing the rafter with the longest span, which is labeled RFT1. The interior span of this rafter is 16 feet and has a two foot eave. We'll use the rafter module, plug in that information, and use auto size and determine that we should use the number two dug for a two by four rafter space 24 inches on center. We will save that result. Now we can quickly size the rest of the rafters for this roof assembly. We will now design RF22, which has a 10 foot interior span and a four foot overhang. Using the last rafter design, we will rename it RFT1 to RFT2 and put in that design information, modify the rafter span, the overhang, and change the roof pitch to 512. We could probably change the size of these rafters, but to keep this roof simple, we'll use the 2x12 rafter space 24 inches on center and save that result. This roof also consists of an eight foot dormer. We'll design the RFT rafters. They have a 12 foot interior span and a one foot overhang. We'll rename this rafter RFT3, put in the design information, including a 312 roof pitch, hit calculate and find it is adequate and save the result. We also have the short rafters hanging off the dormer wall, which we will call RFT4. These rafters have a four foot interior span and a two foot overhang. We will again rename it, put in the span information, including an A12 roof pitch, and save that result. Now we can start designing the roof beams for this project. We'll first design roof beam RFV1 which has a 20 foot span and supports rafters RFT1 and RFT2. We'll design this by using the multi-span, multi-loaded module. We put in the 20 foot span and use a uniform load hyperlink to input these roof loads. Simply click the hyperlink, pick RFT1 from the list, select reaction A, and these reactions will be dropped into the analysis. We can also add Rafter RFT2, select reaction A, and this completes the loading on this beam. You can see on the loading link box where we have added rafters RFT1 and RFT2. And you can see the reaction from these rafters have been converted into a uniform load on the span. We can now change the defaults on this analysis to be a roof beam. By clicking the roof beam default, you can see that the roof beam deflection limits and duration factor are applied to this design. Now we will auto size and select a 24FV4 glue lamp beam and determine that we need a 5.5 by 13.5 inch glue lamp for this design. We will save that result. Next, we will design RFV2. This is a 24 foot long beam and has a back wall rafters RFT2, portions of the roof using RFT1, and the dormer rafters RFT3. We will use the previous RFV1 design and rename it RFV2, as well as change the span to 24 feet. For the uniform load, we still have the loading from rafter RFT2, but as you can see, we do not have RFT1 across the entire span. So we will delete RFT1 from the loading link box. 
and put the different rafters in the hyperlinks located in the trapezoidal load input boxes. You can see that rafter RT1 extends from the end of the beam to a distance of six feet across the span. We will click the hyperlink for trapezoidal load one, select RFT1, pick reaction A, and put the loading from zero to six feet on the beam span. Next, we'll add dormers rafters RFT3. Using the trapezoidal load two hyperlink, we select rafter RFT3, pick reaction A, and input its location from 6 feet to 14 feet along the beam span. You can see as we add these loads, they will appear on the loading screen and also the loading link boxes. Now we can complete the load design by adding the remaining RFT1 rafters. Using the trapezoidal load 3 hyperlink, pick RFT1 and reaction A and set the load location from 14 to 24 feet on the beam span. We can now check to see if the same beam works by clicking the calculate button. And we will find that it does not. Using auto size, we determine the final size requirement to be a five and a half by 15 inch wheel lamb beam. We will save that design. Now we can design column COL1, which supports the end of beams RFV1 and RFV2. We will open up the column module. It is a 12 foot long column that is unbraced the full length in both directions. We now pick the column hyperlink to put in the reactions of the beams. We will choose the left reaction of beam RFV1, add it to the design, and continue by adding RFB2. And based on the loading diagram, we will choose the right reaction of this member. These two beam loads are summed together as shown here on the screen. We will try a solid sawing number two dug for column. Auto size it and find that a six by eight post will work for these design conditions. We will save the analysis. Now we will design the floor framing for the structure. We will design the floor joists first by analyzing the joists JST1, which run left to right and are supported by beam FLB2. You can see from the framing plan that this is a multi-span joist which spans 12 feet and 14 feet. We will select the floor joist module and put in the 12 foot and 14 foot span. And using auto size, Determine that 11 and 7 eighths inch TJI 110 space 16% center will meet the design criteria. We will save that analysis. Joist JST2 has spans of 18 feet and 8 feet. We will make a copy of the previous design by renaming it and calling it JST2 and modify the joist spans to 18 feet and 8 feet. By hitting the calculate button, we have determined that the same joists are adequate and save that analysis. Now we want to design joist JST3. You can see from the cross section that these joists support the dormer wall. We will first design the dormer wall by using the wall design module. We will name this WALL1 put in the wall height of eight feet and leave the wall default dead load as 10 pounds per square foot. We can now click the hyperlink and add reaction B from rafter RFT3 and reaction A from the short rafters RFT4. We will try the default design of two by six studs space 16 south center. Hit calculate and find that it is adequate and save that design. We can now take the previous design of Joyce JST2, make a copy by renaming it JST3, 
And now we can add the wall one load to the joist span. We click the hyperlink for the center span, select wall one, add it to design, and set the wall load distance at four feet from the left reaction. You can see this load appear on the loading diagram as well as the loading leak box. When you hit the calculate button, you'll see that these joists have now become inadequate. We will try a heavier joist, like an 11 7 8 inch TGI 1360, and find that it is now adequate and save that design. We are now ready to design the floor beams. You can see from the diagram that we have roof column COL1 bearing on beam FLB1, located between beams FLB2 and FLB3. Since this beam FLB1 may be used in place of a floor joist, we'll use a simple span floor beam module for this analysis. The span of this beam is 12 feet, and we will use a tributary width of one joist space, which is 16 inches or 1.33 feet. Because the majority of this beam will be coming from column CO01, which supports the roof beams, we will use a duration factor 1.15 representing roof snow loads. We can add the column CO01 by clicking the hyperlink, and this column is located eight feet from the left end. By clicking auto size and using a 2.0 microlam, we have determined that we need four one three quarter inch by 11 7 inches LVLs to support the loads. I'll save that analysis. Now we can design floor beam FLB2, which is a multi-span beam with spans of 14 feet and 12 feet. We will open the multi-loaded multi-span beam module put in those spans and use a uniform load hyperlinks to put the center reaction of choice JST1 on both spans. One of the many benefits you get from Load Tracker is a more accurate calculation of the required loads on a span. Most designers would base the loads on this beam on one half the tributary length of joists on each side of this beam. You will find that this is an unconservative assumption. Using this design method, you would get a total uniform load on this beam of 715 PLF. When you use the more accurate design from Load Tracker, you will get a total uniform load of 898 PLF, which is 25% higher. We will now complete the design of this beam by adding the point loads from floor beam FLB1 on the left band. Click the point load hyperlink, grab the B reaction from FLB1, and input location at 10 feet from the left end support point. By auto sizing, we have determined that a 5.5 by 16.5 inch blue end beam will be sufficient to meet the design criteria. We can now save that analysis. We can now design floor beam FLB3, which has a span of 18 feet and supports a left reaction of Joyce JST1. We will open up the multi-loaded multi-span B module, put in the 18-foot span, select a uniform load hyperlink, select JST1, and pick the A reaction to place that load on the beam span. We also have the point load from beam FLB1. Click the point load one hyperlink, Pick FLB1, select the A reaction, and put its location at two feet from the left end. Using auto sign, we find that a five and a half by 12 inch blue lamp beam will work for this design and save that result. That will now size a header located on the left side of this plan. It has a span of 12 feet and supports rafter loads and joist loads. For the first eight feet, it supports the short rafter RFT4 loads and the JST3 loads that support the dormer wall. I will open 
up a multi-loaded, multi-span B module, name it FLB4, put in a 12-foot span, use a trapezoidal load one hyperlink, pick JST3, select the A reaction, and also add RFT4, and select the B reaction. We will set the location of Lowe's lows from 0 feet to 8 feet. We also need to add the reactions from the choice JST2 and or after RFT1. Using the second trapezoidal load hyperlink, we'll put in the Lowe's JST2, reaction A, and also add RFT1, reaction B. Those loads will be summed up, and we will place them at a distance from 8 feet to 12 feet. Since a large portion of these beams are from the roof rafters, we'll use a roof beam default for this header. We'll try a solid sawn header, auto size, and find there are no feasible options. We'll switch to a structural composite. Try a 2.0 microlam and find that three laminations of 1 3 quarter inch by 9 half inch LVLs will work. And save that design. We will now design the lower floor columns starting with column COL2, which is the middle support for floor beam FLB2. We'll open the column module, put in a height of 8 feet, click the hyperlink and put in reaction B of FLB2. Using auto size for number two dug fur post, we find that an eight by eight post is needed to support these loads. And we will save that design. We will now size column COL3 at the back of the building, which is six feet tall. Opening the column module and naming it COL3, with the height of six feet, we can then use the hyperlink and pick FLB1, reaction A. We will assume that number two dug for six by six post will work, hit calculate, and find that it does, and save that result. We will now design column four, which supports FLB3. We will rename the column CLL3 and call it COL4. Put in a revised height of eight feet. Clear the FLB2 load on the load link screen and add reaction A from beam FLB3. By clicking the calculate button, we find that the six by six post works and save the design. We'll finish the column design by sizing column COL5 which supports beams FLB3 and FLB4. It is also an eight foot column. We'll click the hyperlink and select reaction B of FLB3 and reaction B of FLB4. We will try four laminated two by sixes and find that it works to support these loads and save that design. We can now quickly design the footings for this project. We will start with footing FTG1, which supports column COL2. We will go to the footing module, click the hyperlink, and select column COL2. Hit the calculate button, and we find that the footing required with to be 4.08 feet. So we will use a four foot six inch footing. Hit calculate and save it. Putting FTG2 supports column COL3. We will name the footing FTG2. Click the hyperlink to add to that load. Press the calculate button and we'll find that a 2.27 foot width is required. We'll put the footing width of two foot six inches for this design and save it. We will now design footing FTG3, which supports columns COL5. 
since it has a similar load as FTG2, we'll make a copy of it of that design and rename it FTG3. Delete column two in the load link box and add column COL5 load. Hit the calculate button and find that the two foot six footing is still adequate and save it. The last square footing we'll design is FTG5. We'll rename this design FTG5, delete COL6, and add COL4. Hit calculate and find that a two foot square footing will support this column load. We will make that change and save it. The final element of design I will show in this project is the continuous footing along the back wall of this project. We will first design the support wall for this area. We will open the wall module, call it WALL2, and select a two story loading. The upper wall is eight foot tall, which we will input here, and the lower wall is six feet in height, which we will put here. We can now use Load Tracker to add the loads from Rafter RFT2 and Joyce JST3. Click the hyperlink and add the B reaction of RFT2 and the C reaction of JST3. The loads from these members are summed up at this location. You can also add a lateral design pressure on this wall. We will assume a wind design pressure of 20 PSF. Hit calculate, and as you can see, the default design of two by six studs spaced 16 inches on center will work for this design. And we'll save that. We can now design a continuous footing for this wall. We will open up the footing module Select the continuous footing option, call this footing FTG6, and add wall to load using the hyperlink. We'll put in a stem wall height of 24 inches and leave the eight inch width as is. Hit calculate and find that the required footing width is 7.37 inches. For this design, we will select a 16 inch width and save it. As you can see, Load Tracker saves a tremendous amount of time if we were able to design 27 members of this project in less than 25 minutes. What you will find is that Load Tracker can save even more time if you had to make design changes on a project. Let's say, for example, we made a mistake and found out we were supposed to design the roof for 35 pounds per square foot loading instead of the 25 PSF that we used. I will now show you how we can quickly update this design. We'll open up Rafter RFT1, change the loading, hit calculate, and find it is now inadequate. And change the spacing to put the rafters to 16 inches on center. Hit calculate again. It is now adequate and resave it. We will also do that for Rafter RFT2. Hit calculate and find it is still adequate and resave it. We will do the same thing for RFT3 and RFT4. Now we can check to see if any of the other project members have become inadequate due to these changes. We can go to the Load Tracker tab, hit Calculate Project, select Calculate All, and now Load Tracker will cycle revised calculations for the entire project and let you know which members have become inadequate. You will now be given the option to open all the members that have become inadequate. In this project, there are three members that have become inadequate. I will open up putting FTG4. It now requires a larger width, so I'll put in three feet. Hit Calculate. It is now adequate and resave it. Open up column COL1, select auto size, and find now that I need an eight by eight post and resave it. Finally, I can open up beam 
FLB2, auto size it, and find that we now need an 18 inch glue lamb beam and resave it. As you can see, in just a few minutes, I was able to make the appropriate changes to complete this project. As you can imagine, having to update these calculators manually, even using struct calc, would take a considerable amount of time. We are now done with our project. You can print all your members using the print project option. You can also get a report that shows all the members that are linked using Load Tracker. The Load Tracker tab and select Summary Report, and you can get a printout of all the Load Tracker links between your project members. We hope this video helps show you the powerful capability of Load Tracker and also demonstrate a few ways how you can use it even better. If you have questions regarding StruckCalc or Load Tracker, please call us at 1-800-279-1353. Thank you for your time.